What's up, boils and ghouls? JD here. Now, some of you may be asking yourselves, probably nobody's asking themselves this, but some people may be like, what's up with JT? He's not doing horror-related videos anymore. All I see from him is toy updates, video games, yada, yada, yada. Well, I tell you, JT is still into the horror, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so much so that I've gotten into a slasher's kick the last few days. Been watching slashers, uh, trying to watch some new ones that I haven't seen before. And I just watched the original Alone in the Dark, and uh, some may call that a slasher. I would say so, very much so. It's more of a uh, psychological slasher, you know, instead of as opposed to the normal uh, teenager kill, kill, kill slasher, which we all love. But anyways. Got old JT's brain uh, working here. I wanted to do a video for you. So I decided to go through my collection and pick out um, a bunch of slashers that I own that don't get a lot of recognition. Now, some of these do, some like especially with the horror click we got going on here on YouTube. All you guys know about these mostly. But maybe there's some newcomers on here or some people may stumble across this and doesn't know or want to know about a lot of, or they want to know about uh, slashers that they haven't seen before. Um, so I decided to go ahead and just talk about mine, and most of these are uh, my favorite slashers, or some of. And these are in no order, so I'm just going to go ahead and go through them because we've got a lot to cover here. I'm just going to call this video Slasher Talk. And I may do one of these from time to time, like on different uh, horror categories. But let's just go ahead and get into it. <clears throat> First one up here, we have the 80s uh, classic, Slaughter High. It doesn't get a lot of play, doesn't get a lot of mention, but this movie is very uh, very notable and a very good entry into the slasher uh, genre, in my opinion. Now, in the 80s, after Friday the 13th came out, it killed the game for slashers. Like, everybody and their brother was putting out a slasher movie, which was cool because we got a lot of good films because of Friday the 13th. I didn't. I, ch I chose not to put those or like uh, Halloween and stuff in there because we all know about those. So I figured I'd just try to talk about stuff that not a lot of people <clears throat> talk about usually. Cool killer in this one. I uh, don't think it has a picture of him on there. He's got like a uh, like a school jacket on and a gesture clown <clears throat> uh, mask. I remember seeing this in the video store all the time back in the day. I never uh, never rented it until I got older. So cool slasher. I probably won't say much about a lot of these because we've got a lot to go through in a little amount of time since I can only do 10 minute videos still uh, because I do them on my phone or whatever. So, uh, you know, that's cool. Whatever. Uh, Psychos in Love. Now, I haven't actually watched this all the way through, but from what I watched, it seemed like a, uh, like a uh, Bonnie and Clyde type slasher movie about two crazy people in love. But look at that cover art, man. That's just amazing. So I figured I would talk about that. Uh, but I'm going to finish that up here pretty soon. Maybe tonight and talk about that more later. Uh, My Bloody Valentine. Now, with the remake that came out, a lot of people uh, picked up on this. And I can honestly say that I didn't know about this film until the remake came out. And I know that's sad. That's very sad. But for some reason, this just never made it to my neck of the woods. And uh, you know, But I'm very glad that it did because it's an awesome slasher. And with this release, you get the uncut footage. Great stuff. Got to love uh, Harry Warden there. The old... Coal miner. Now this next one up is a, is a personal favorite of mine. It took forever for me to actually get to see this, but kept hearing people talk about it and seeing the the cover art, and watching videos. Just oh man, the mutilator. Um, not not a lot in the way of story in this film, but the gore. Oh, oh man, it's it's definitely worth it. Uh, loads of gore for you gore hounds out there. Uh, you got a fish hook in the vagina. You got a chainsaw. Uh, just tons of cool kills. I highly recommend old uh, Buddy Cooper's The Mutilator here. Uh, Big Ben, I think, is the killer in that one. I think that's his name or something like that. I don't know. Uncle Ben, Big Ben, I don't know. Motel Hell. Now, some of you may shake your head and say, not a slasher, JT. And you're right. Not all the way a slasher, but, um, you know, you got old Farmer Vincent in there, and he comes out in a big pig head at the end with a chainsaw and stuff, and that looks very much slasher to me, so, Backwoods, slasher, uh, twisted family type movie, Motel Hell, you guys know about this one, and I've had this forever, this is an old bootleg. Um, next up, we got the Slumber Party Massacre franchise, all you guys know about this one, and if you don't, I don't know what to say, get drilled, look at that. Love those movies. Always love those cover arts. You can see why. When I was a kid, I used to pick those up and uh, venture to ask my mom to rent them, and she'd be like, no. 
because she thought they were pornos. But, you know, that's cool. I snuck and watched them anyway. Uh, we got He Knows You're Alone. Tom Hanks, early, early appearance in here. Very different type slasher. Not a lot of gore or anything like that, but cool story about a slasher, or a slasher story about a guy that only kills bridesmaids and people who do weddings and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Check that one out. If you're a slasher enthusiast like myself, we got The House on Sorority Row. A lot of you guys know about this one. Uh, very, very good. Uh, cut them up. Uh, sorority house women type movie what more can you say you got all the elements in there they all come together to make a great movie you got a weird killer at the end of it in like a clown costume which you don't see the killer hardly throughout the movie but then when you do you're just like oh man that's, that's crazy and this next one up here is another personal fave of JT's that does not get a lot of play and it should and that's just before dawn now damn it I'm telling you guys if you have not watched this movie watch it because the atmosphere the way this is shot, the scenery, the characters, the killer, backwoods, everything is just great about Just Before Dawn. And I'm going to leave it on that note with that one because just awesome movie. Happy Birthday to Me came out uh, not too long ago from a better, or uh, this is a better release from my understanding from the other, which I seen the other release at the pawn shop there, and I might buy that just for the other soundtrack, which I hear is crap. Getting a text message. But look at that cover art. I always remember that one from back in the day, or I remember this image from somewhere. Um, cool slasher, twist ending, cool kills. You get a weight, uh, a weight to the groin. You know, it makes every dude grab his, his balls and, you know, shiver all over like a little girl. We got Happy Hell Night. Still got the $3 sticker on there from the pawn shop. I like this movie. A lot of people uh, dog this movie and, you know, crap on it, but I dig this movie. Cool killer. Pretty cool cast. You got the college, another co one of the college films. Um, I want to do a whole horror college theme video sometime because, excuse me, I seem to have a lot of those in my collection. Cool movie. Happy Hell Night. It's cheesy fun. Anchor Bay release. Cheesy fun, guys. And speaking of fun, we have The Fun House. Toby Hooper. Cool slasher. Weird killer, which turns into a creature feature and almost at the end of it when you find out who the killer is. Oh, we got an old Frankenstein getting a hand job in here. What more can you ask for, you know? Oh, uh, Frankenweenie needs love too, so check out the fun house. Next up, <clears throat> Dr. Giggles. You see this one on late night TV back in the day. Got the Drake in there, Tim Drake, I think, or Larry Drake. Not Tim Drake, not not Robin. We got I think this guy's name's Larry Drake or something like that that plays <clears throat> Dr. Giggles. This is a silly fun movie. And it's a slasher movie in my opinion about a killer doctor that giggles. <clears throat> Next up here we got, sorry, JT's voice is getting parched. <clears throat> the Boogeyman, supernatural slasher, got a crappy remake and an even crappier sequel to the remake. But the original Boogeyman is fun. I never watched the Boogeyman too, which is in this set. I'll have to get around to that one of these days. <clears throat> Pretty decent movies or movie. And then next, <clears throat> next up here is one you guys must watch: The Burning. <coughs> I think I'm dying. Shit. <coughs> there we go. <clears throat> yeah. The Burning. Uh, Tom Savini special effects. On par with Friday the 13th 2. Not 1. Um, Tom Savini chose to do this over Friday the 13th 2. Good choice, Tom. Good choice. <clears throat> Love the burning. Cropsy. Shears. Oh, man. It's awesome. American Gothic. You see this one in the video store back in the day. Old man, old lady slasher. Another twisted family type movie. <clears throat> but a slasher. You got teenagers, uh, cool kills, cool cover art. Uh, not, not the same as the original cover art, but, but cool. <clears throat> and I don't know why I picked this one out, but Black Christmas the remake, I like it. Everybody else may hate it. I don't own the original Black Christmas. I know, guys. I know. Don't, you know. Don't hurt my feelings, but I need to get that one. I gotta get that. I'm making a list of slashers I have to get right now, and that's going on there, along with a lot of others. But a Black Christmas remake, it's fun. Pop it in on Christmas, snuggle up to chestnuts on an open fire. It's fun. And that's all I'm gonna say, guys. Peace out.